Hurt people, hurt people, but we might have took it too far. Don't ever question if it's love, you know I got you if you do call. It's so much easier to run with the traumas wherever you are. Can't afford to point the finger, should probably tend to my own flaws. Go. With what little pride I can salvage, I'll just pick up and go. Trying to see in your heart, you went straight for the throat. Know you fronted the bill, but now we did be the quote. That's time spent with nothing to show. Hard to stomach, I know. Manipulation, we didn't need to deploy. But you playing with my vision like you think it's a toy. A product of pain, your demons bleed through the noise. Nothing but a host you sent to seek and destroy. Just a reminder, to lay your mind up. This ain't no size up, and not a fair fight. Neither the body start to pile up, let's put that behind us. No looking back or looking down, and forever to meet again, it'll probably be on a cloud. It's the principality, love, not keeping count. My default is sugar free, when in doubt, I was bleeding out. Clear to see, nothing to see. Nobody to blame here but me. Hurt people, hurt people, but we might have took it too far. Don't ever question if it's love, you know I got you if you do call. It's so much easier to run with the traumas wherever you are. Can't afford to point your fingers, should probably tend to my own flaws. Girl, uh, just by a show of hands, who could really leave with the chance? Seen some good kids die before Kenny in the van. Grieving on the spectrum, they may never understand. With all that still sticking to the plan as far as where I land. So aiming for the sky, praying we align. Don't pass me by, I'm alive on the far side. They got the means to move the finish and the start line. So what's a steep fall from a hard climb? So up the mountain I go. No time to explain, I paint it vivid if I make it back home. Bob Ross on every beat, I put the pain in the song. Breaking down the game film, trying to see what went wrong. So the loss matters more than the win. Then living with regret like you didn't pull the pin. Hand grenade in the shade, slow dancing on the limb. For what it's worth, I do it all again. Hurt people, hurt people, but we might have took it too far. Don't ever question if it's love, you know I got you if you do call. It's so much easier to run with the traumas wherever you are. Can't afford to point your fingers, you're probably testing my own flaws. Girl.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live streaming on the uh, nursing opportunity in Canada. My name is Israel Roman, 
if you guys are able to hear me, if you can just uh, say it in the chat box, that'll be great. So that I know, right, that I'm not, that there's no problems with our sound system. Can everyone hear me? And I see a yes. Perfect. Thank you, Mom Jenica. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Faye. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So we can go ahead and get this one started. It is, what time is it? It's already uh, <clears throat> two minutes past the uh, our start time so we can go ahead and uh, in respect with everyone's time let's go ahead and get this one started Oops, okay. okay so once again my name is israel roman and i'll be your licensed canadian immigration consultant and at the same time i am an active uh, registered nurse here in Canada. So our home office, our main office is here in British Columbia and that's where I am right now. And it is 7.03 p.m. here. It is Thursday and I know it's already 10 a.m. Friday, Manila time. So yeah, so uh, welcome everyone, good morning. And we have our office in the Philippines, which is in uh, JP Laurel Highway, Lipa City, Batangas. So this one would be a very, very informative uh, webinar or live streaming with regards to how do I go to Canada and work, live as an RN? I know you guys, that's the... Uh, that's the biggest question that you guys have right now. I'm an RN back home and I want to come to Canada and be an RN in Canada. How do I do it? Right. So, and uh, that's why we are here to answer that uh, million dollar question and help you guys out. Credentials. So I'm pretty sure you guys are asking who the hell is this person, right? Talking in the Zoom, how credible is this person? Are we sure that this person is not a scam or, uh, or whatnot, right? And that is a very, very, very fair question, especially nowadays, right? So there's a lot of uh, scams happening out there. And of course, I want you guys to feel comfortable working with our company. So <clears throat> as a license, to be a licensed immigration consultant, I had to take the uh, immigration course. And I did take my immigration course with uh, UBC or University of British Columbia and completed that one, passed their exam, and then went to registered with ICCRC or the uh, Immigration Consultant of Canada, Regulatory Council, and passed the uh, board exam. So. You can treat ICCRC the same as uh, in the Philippines if, uh, as a, an RN, you need to be registered with PRC, right? So it's the same thing, right? So you need to pass your board exam and stay active and in good standing in order to practice as an RN. So same thing with immigration consultant, we have to maintain a good standing as well. So <clears throat> it is a federal law that anyone Canadian federal law that anyone that provides advice or whether it's a free advice or paid advice when it comes to Canadian visa matters, they need to be licensed with ICCRC, okay? So the only people that can give you free advice would be your family members. Other than that, they are not able to under the... Uh, Canadian federal law. They need to be licensed with ICCRC. So I know you guys would like to see, uh, okay, yeah, you're registered, you're saying you're registered with ICCRC, but how can we really confirm that one? So 
I will help you guys with that. So we go to ICCRC website. And same as PRC, you search for the uh, RN, right? See if they have a valid license. So with ICCRC, just click on verify your immigration consultant. And then on the advanced RCIC check, you just type in the name of the person. So for this webinar it would be myself. So Roman, last name, first name is Israel and hit search. And you'll see here my name, Roman Israel, and it's an active. This is my license number. And when we hit contact, it would provide you where I am working from, which is the Nanaimo BC and the company. Okay. So now with this one, you can be certain that I am indeed in good standing with our professional body. Now I did mention that I work for uh, Roman can Roman and Associates Immigration Services, and of course the next question is how legit is that business, right? So we can go to Canada Business Registry and uh, hit accept. So this is for the business registries. Uh, find businesses within Canada, so British Columbia, Roman and Associates. Sorry, I maybe spelled that incorrectly. There you go. So Roman and Associates Immigration Services Limited, and it says here that our office is an IML BC, and it is a BC company and it's active. Okay. So now there's two things. So you're able to verify that I am indeed licensed in good standing with our professional body and the business does exist, it's a corporation. Now, the other thing is how true is it that the person that's talking right now in the webinar is Israel, is really Israel Roman. So you can go ahead and search using, let's say google.com or any search engine. And let's type in my name, let's see what pops up. Okay, Israel, Roman, and Naimo. And on the right-hand side, it does say Roman and Associates. That's the company I'm associated with. There are seven Google reviews, so that's good. They're all five stars, perfect. And it says here that the office is closed, which because we are open only until five and we'll open again tomorrow. And and this one, you can go ahead and try to see if there's any red flags, right? About myself or about Israel Roman or about the company. And let's go look at the pictures just to verify really, right? So who is Israel Roman? So this one right here, you can see, you can go ahead and compare this person right here behind the podium and the person that's talking right now, if they are the same. So it says here, Nanaimo Hospital Auxiliary Donation tops 300,000. So that's myself right there, giving a small thank you speech to the volunteers. Okay, let's take, click another picture. So that's myself again with holding a big check. Hospital, Nanaimo Hospital gets 340,000. So that's this is from the BC local news. Maybe let's click on one more. Maybe this one right here. So this is uh, with one of our clients who, uh, when she first arrived in Canada in Nanaimo, so just a quick selfie. So yeah, and this one is another picture of myself touring a, uh, a visitor in our ICU. Okay, so again, the reason why I'm showing you guys this one is just to make sure that I give you guys peace of mind in work in uh, working with us, right? So I'm hoping with that one, you're now confident and comfortable working with Roman and Associates. So how to become a registered nurse? And 
registered nurse here in Canada? So again, that's the biggest question. So option one is the not so easy version, which is the traditional version. So if you are to do it by yourself, what you'll need to do is you need to take your IELTS, okay? Once you have taken your IELTS, you apply for your assessment with National Nursing Assessment Service. So this is a, uh, it is a company that assesses your, your education, your nursing education, and compare that one with the Canadian nursing education and see if there's any gaps, right? Then once you're done with that one, once you have the result for NNAS, then you'll have to take the IELTS again. The reason being is that on your first IELTS and then the NNAS, that might take more than two years for you to complete, okay? So by the time your NNAS is complete, your IELTS has expired. So now you need to retake your IELTS to go to the next step, which is NCAS or your Nursing Competency Assessment Service. So this one would be your exam, not the board exam yet, but just to be uh, able to take the board exam, you need to have the Nursing Competency Assessment Service. So there's two parts. First is the computer-based assessment. So this is a uh, question and answer, right? So there's hundred items in there. So you, it's kind of like a board exam. Then the second part is the simulated lab and oral assessment. So with this one, if you go back to your college years and let's say, think of, let's say your return demonstration. Okay, that's how, that's what I, uh, uh, we call it in my, in during college, it's return demonstration. So let's say Monday, Tuesday, it's your theory. Let's say head to toe assessment. All right, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's all about theory on head to toe assessment, how to do it. Thursday and Friday is your return demonstration. You now perform your head to toe assessment. It's the same thing, all right? So now you go to a lab and you perform some nursing procedures and in front of the panel. And so an example again is head to toe assessment. So how do you perform head to toe assessment? And then they'll, while you're doing it, there'll be questions asked and that's the oral assessment. Then once you have done NCAS and NNAS, so those two results, that one would now determine what are the courses that you need to take as an internationally educated nurse. So that is, that is what we call transitional coursework. So it could be a one course that is one two months in duration, or it could be a one course, six months duration, could be six courses for a year, or it could be a, uh, a full year of return, uh, re entry to nursing, or worse comes to worse, if you don't have, uh, if you didn't prepare well for your NCAS, it might be as worse as, unfortunately, take, you'll have to take the entire nursing course again. Right. Once you're done with your end with your transition transitional coursework, then you can now take and challenge the NCLEX. So that is the board exam for Canada for the nursing for nurses in Canada. <clears throat> Sorry. And then once you pass your NCLEX, then you search for your full time employment, which is again a challenge. During uh, it's a challenge for this version. Right? So we'll tell you another, an easier version. So the other challenging part on this one is that for the uh, simulated lab and oral assessment, you can only take that one here in BC. If you're going to BC, it's not, it's not, prov it's not given anywhere else. Okay. So not outside of Canada. And then once you've done that one, you have to go back home. And then once you're ready for your tra transitional coursework, you have to come back here again for that one, All right? Once you have completed that one, then you have to go back home again and then take your NCLEX, uh, wait for your NCLEX exam. And then once you have taken your NCLEX exam, then you search for your full-time employment. And maybe by that time, 
you'll be searching for full-time employment outside of Canada, which is a very challenging part, okay? So if that is not the way to go, or it's not that easy, or it's hard, or it's almost impossible, so what is the easiest way then? Or what's the other option? So the other option is with Stanford College and our firm, Roman and Associates Immigration Services, this would be your pathway to Canada and work as an RN and live here in Canada as an RN. So step one is you apply for your study permit and what you'll be taking is the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing. So mom Jenica from Stenberg will uh, give us more information on what PGD CN or PGN is all about, okay? And how will this one help you, not just to prepare for your NCAS and for you, prepare you to be an RN here in Canada, but as well as help you financially as well. Step two, okay? Once you have completed your PGN, then apply for your permanent residency and open work permit via the BC Provincial Nominee Program. So between option one and option two, this is the fastest and easiest way. It's kind of like it's all streamlined. You come here to uh, take the PG, D, uh, PG Diploma in Canadian Nursing. Once you've completed that one, apply for your permanent residency. Now, why would I like to work in Canada? What's the wage in Canada, all right? How is it different in terms of work uh, wage-wise, right? So effective April 1, 2020, so uh, BC Nurses Union. So for British Columbia, we have one union for all nurses. So this is the rate that you'll be getting anywhere in British Columbia. So first year, right? your entry uh, wage would be $35.53. After your first year, you go up to 36.89. After your second year, going into your third year, 38.26, until you reach your ninth year, which is 46.65. You don't need to ask for the wage. You don't need to pass anything. It, it is automatic. After working for one year, it goes up. After working for a second year, it goes up again, okay? So it goes up on your anniversary. Then level four, level five, level six, those are the supervisory roles. So you, yeah, I mean, like it could be the head nurse kind of thing. Level one, level two, these are LPN or licensed practical nurse, okay? And pretty sure this is only good until 2022. After 2022, they'll have a new a new uh, wage scale, and this one will no will not go down. It will just go up again. So this first year right here on the new collective agreement, this one will be higher than that one. So let's get some computations in. So let's say you are in the entry level, which is thirty five point fifty three times forty hours. That would be in a week. That would give you. 1400 or 1400 in a month that would give you 5600 or 5600 in a year 52 weeks in a year that would give you 73902 and if we convert that one to philippine peso at 35 pesos per dollar i know right now it's at 39 i think 3940 you'll be getting 2.5 million pesos per year again 2.5 i'll pause right here and give you a quick a question in your nursing career if you've been nursing for at least five years ten years do you or when when, when you reach your fifth year or when you reach your tenth year as a nurse in the philippines do you think you'll be earning 2.5 million pesos? 
And I think the answer to that one is a no, because I myself was a nurse back home in the Philippines, and I know what the wage is in the Philippines right now. And and yes, I mean, like a right now, an emergency department nurse in UP, the offer is around 40,000 per year, right? So I've been there before. And, and the other thing that's not mentioned here is the amount of workload, right? So here we have, we, a nurse would be looking after probably four, five, six patients, right? And earn this money. In the Philippines, I'm pretty sure you guys are not just looking after six patients. I'm pretty sure you guys are looking at least 10 patients, if not 20 patients, right? And earning 40,000, the most, okay? And try to... Uh, Remember this amount right here, the 73,902, which is again, your annual salary, okay. So what are the advantages in joining with us, with Roman Associates and Stanford? So first is, yes, we are partnered with a highly respected college, Stanford, right? So Stanford College exists and exists because of you guys. They did a uh, research, on how to get nurses, how to get you guys, nurses back home, outside of Canada, how do we get those nurses here in Canada and be able to work here and live here, right? So Stenberg has the answer for that one. Reasonable administration, again, sorry for the uh, typo. 50% discount on professional or consultant's fee. So this is the, uh, of course, as when you hire us as your immigration consultant, there's some overhead that we have to worry about, right? So there's a consultant's fee. But for this webinar, there's a 50% discount just for watching the webinar. And there's no IELTS. And uh, Ms. Jenica from Stenberg will give us more information on the uh, no IELTS thing. Job security as an RN post course. So if the fear is that, will I have a job after I finish the course? The answer to that one is a yes, right? Right now, there are in, 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 in the Naimo hospital, hospital alone, there are, there are at least 50 vacancies right now, five zero, at least. I don't have the exact number. I have to go back to my emails, but there's at least 50 uh, vacancies right now for nursing. And that's only our hospital. Our hospital is only at 344 bed, right? So, and there's a lot of uh, hospitals in BC that's even uh, have a bigger than the Naimo Hospital, right? The one in uh, Surrey where Stenberg College is, uh, Surrey Memorial, their emergency department has like 100, 100, of, 100 bays, right? So just imagine how big the hospital is. If you have an emergency department that has 100 Bates or 100 rooms, emergency department only. And they need tons of nurses as well. And we will be here to guide you until you get your permanent resident status, right? So once again, with Stanbury College and our firm, Roman and Associates, this will be your gateway to coming to Canada as an RN, work and live in Canada as a registered nurse. And with this, I will hand over the floor to Ms. Jenica of Stenberg College. Mom, Jenica, are you around? If you're talking, oh, make you a host. Yes, that's right. Hold on.
All right. Why can't I make you a host? That is a problem. Hello, I'm here. Hello, Mom Jenica. Hello, hi, sorry, sir. Good morning to everyone watching. Um, thank you for joining the webinar. My name is Jenica Liserio. I'm the Director for International Admissions and Recruitment for Southeast Asia. And again, thank you so much for um, inviting me again to this webinar. So, yes, sir, sir has given you a lot of information. Okay, and we will address all of your questions later. And now I'm going to share my screen with you so that you know what program we have at Stanford College that you can take in order for you to join the um, medical industry in Canada. So let me just um, share my screen. And I'll be skipping some of the slides here because I think Sir Israel already... Um, addressed some of them. Okay. I'm just going to stop my video so that we'll have a better connection. Okay. I'm going to show you our introductory video first, and then we will discuss the rest of information about Stanford College and then the programs. Please enjoy. There you go. So that is Stanford College. So what I'll be discussing would be the overview of our institution. I'm not going to discuss the RNLPN process because that has already been addressed, but I'll discuss the programs that you can enroll in and then the entry requirements and the fees. So first, let's learn about our school. So Stanford College is a private post-secondary college. We were founded back in 1990 by Mary Jane Stenberg. We originally have been um, delivering medical programs specifically in the nursing um, industry. We've been doing that for over 30 years and we're a well-known medical college in British Columbia, in Surrey, British Columbia. Our specialization really is in healthcare, but over the years we have expanded our program offerings to education, business, and human services. We only have one campus which is located in Surrey and it's in front of the Central Sky Train Station. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, Surrey is a suburb of Vancouver. 
but it's a great place to start if you are an international student because you will have a lower cost of living. And who wouldn't want that, diba? Yung makasave tayo. So, Surrey is just about 40-minute train ride um, to Vancouver. It's a very accessible location. Nasa harapan lang yung mga bus stops. Okay? Um, so, madali siyang mapuntahan, madali kang makapag-travel. One of the things that we really pride ourselves with at Stanford College, being a private institution, is that we've established really strong employer and industry relationships. And this affects our students in terms of getting them jobs. So later on, we'll discuss more of that. Now, once you become a Stanford College student, we are big on support and services. We always talk about student success. And when we're talking about student success, we're not limiting it to just the academic success. We're talking about your holistic success, which includes your employment. And especially for international students, yung ating permanent residency, your pathway to permanent residency. So with that, we've, um, we have incorporated a lot of support and services into the school for our international students. So some of which would be, number one, student services. If you have any questions or anything at all concerns, um, you don't know what department to go to, you just go to student services. So we call them student success coordinators, and they are the first group of people that you'll be speaking with. We also have academic support. So being an international student, um, it's possible that you need to make some adjustments, you know, um, baka hindi tayo sanay sa type of delivery mode ng school, or um, you need additional English support. So we have academic support wherein we do one-on-one -on -one sessions, may mga free na English language classes, we address different types of assessments for students. We provide life coaches to students. So lahat ng yan to ensure that they, sub they pass their subjects. We also have accommodation assistance. So on campus, we don't have a dorm. Okay, wala po tayong dorm. But the students normally go for different types of accommodation. So number one, we can endorse you to a partner homestay. So partner homestays, um, homestays basically would be a family hosting your stay. Um, they probably have a room that they rent out. It's a great way for you to immerse yourself into the Canadian culture because you'll be living with a family, you'll be um, using the language all the time, you'll be observing and living the lifestyle. So it's one way that you can really immerse yourself into the Canadian culture and lifestyle. So you can choose that. Or, but it in a man that we assist in looking for an accommodation for you, which happened to most of our students for the fall intake. Some of them, meron na talaga silang kamag-anak, and some of them naman, they ask for our assistance to find them accommodation. And we always go back to our network. Yung mga students na namin, mga um, connections namin, and we provide our students information where they can get accommodation. We also have career services. So this is very important to international students especially because once a student arrives, they have um, they are allowed to work part-time as well. And of course, we want a holistic completion after your schooling, dapat maging employed ka. So we organize um, events wherein you learn how to write your CVs, your resumes, cover letters, how to ace your interview. So, tinuturuan kayo outside of your academics. Uh, we invite employers over. And if you need assistance in looking for a part-time job, okay, you just go to, to career services and we assist you with that. In relation to the career services, we incorporated our programs with co-op, practicum, and job placement. So, co-op, 
is um, it means cooperative work experience okay and para siyang internship here in the philippines we normally call it internship or on the job training so the co-op is part of your curriculum you need to complete your hours in order for you to complete the program the good thing about our co-op is that you don't need to look for an employer anymore because we have the partner employers ready for the co-op um, second best thing about the co-op is that you will be getting paid and the payment that we have for our students is as per the industry rate okay, hindi ka tulad dito sa philippines that Normally, it's just the allowance, right? So we have our co-op partners that pay as per the industry rate. We also have practicum. So sometimes um, before a co-op, there will be some type of practice before you are placed in a co-op environment. And of course, we do the job placement there. Lastly, we have immigration consultation support. So being an international student, you will definitely be uh, asking questions about your visa, your status, future plans. If you need to talk to an immigration consultant, you just need to let us know and we facilitate that for you. Okay, so I'm just going to skip some of these slides because ito na yung um, process. How to process. Okay, I'm just going to skip those videos for you. Let's dive in. What is the program for you? If you're a registered nurse, you have work experience, you want to practice in Canada, okay? What is the program that you need to take? So we have a program called Postgraduate Diploma in Canadian Nursing with Co-op. Now, this program is specifically designed for nurses, Okay. If you want to practice your profession, this is the program. Now, for those of you who are attending who are not yet RNs or maybe you're an RN but you don't have work experience, do not fret. I'll be discussing another program for you later on. Now, this program, as I've said, is specifically designed for registered nurses who have work experience. This is a two-year program. Okay, within that two years, you will have about 11 months of paid co-op. So, napakatagal ng opportunity for you to learn in a practical sense and for you to earn more money. We have four intakes per year, January, March, June, and September. Now, um, this is our last campaign for the September intake. We're still accepting students for the online September, okay? So we have two types of deliveries for this program. We have the online plus face-to-face, -face, and we have the face-to-face -face only. So normally, this program is really delivered face-to-face -face only. But because of the pandemic, we had to make some adjustments for students who want to start their programs. So we created one that will allow them to do the um, six months online, and then the rest of the program face-to-face. -face. So I'll discuss both types of deliveries, okay? And this program is also a dual qualification. It means that you will not just be receiving a postgraduate diploma, but you'll also be receiving a healthcare assistant diploma. So how does this uh, go? Kapag face-to-face -face only siya. First, our students have the option to take English for academic purpose. If you just want to, it's optional. If you want to have an English intensive class for 12 weeks, that's up to you. Or you don't need it, that's fine. Okay? You can start the program with learning the HCA diploma. So the first five months of the program, you learn how to become a registered healthcare aide. What is a healthcare aide? Healthcare aides are healthcare assistants, personal support worker, caregivers. They are frontline care providers. Okay, and this is a very in-demand profession in Canada as well. So um, we embedded a diploma program here in the postgraduate diploma. So para siyang dalawang diploma. Um, what we did with the healthcare assistant diploma, we did a fast track version. 
So after five months, there's no more exam. You, um, we will facilitate the registration and you will be a registered HCA. So what is the advantage if you're already a registered HCA while you're going through the whole postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing? One advantage is that since you can work part-time, Okay. You can already work in the medical industry as a registered HCA. That will allow you to immerse yourself in the medical industry. Um, you, that will allow you to you know, learn more, to understand the program better. And dahil registered HCA na kayo, meron na kayong title, okay? when you're doing your part-time work, you'll have a higher pay. Um, in British Columbia, the base salary is 15.20 um, per hour, dollars per hour. But as a registered HCA, if you're working part-time, you will be earning on average about $23 per hour. So just imagine in just five months, you're earning $15.20 per hour. After five months, you can be earning on average $23 an hour. So we're maximizing your earning potential because you already have a valid designation. Another advantage is that all the co-ops that you'll go through, the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing, they will all be as a registered HCA. And again, our co-ops are paid. Um, and lastly, the other advantage here is that this is a fallback career. Whatever happens to this program, to your postgraduate diploma program, you will all, you're already a registered HCA. And that means you can accept a work sponsorship under this designation, and you will have a pathway to permanent residency. Now, after five months that you've completed the whole HCA, naging registered HCA na kayo, Next thing that will happen is we will place you to your first co-op. So the full, the full 11 months, it's divided into two co-ops. So co-op one would be about 10 weeks. And then you'll go back and study again and learn about the Canadian healthcare context. And then finally, the rest of the program will be a paid co-op. Now, once you're studying this program, we are also facilitating your registration. So kanina na discuss um, that there is a process that you need to go through in order for you to get your license as a nurse. You can either be a registered nurse or you can be a licensed practical nurse. Either way, you'll have to go through a whole process because you're an internationally educated nurse. So with that process, you'll have to apply to the NNAS, register to the province, go through an exam. So all of that will be addressed in this program. We will be providing you with a review and preparation for the English proficiency test that you'll have to take. You will be given a review, preparation, and training for the NCAS competence assessment and for your licensure exam. And you have the option kung ang ipopursue ninyo ay RN or LPN. Now, let's talk about how this program is delivered when it's done online. Okay, So again, we just created this type of delivery because of the demand of the students. And we're only doing it for this year. We already have students ng January and March who have completed um, the online delivery part, and they will be starting their face-to-face -face in October. So the online is called Foundations in Canadian Nursing, or FCNC, and then you will have to transition to face-to-face. -face. It will still have the same duration. In total, it will still be two years, and in total, you will still have 11 months of paid co-op. Now, for the online, it will start on September 20. We will accept um, enrollments until next week, September 15. Still, the qualification, dual qualification pa rin siya. So, what's going to happen online? For the first six months, you will be studying the program online. And then on April, April 2022, you will have to do the face-to-face -face version. Now, 
With this, the live classes for online is 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Manila time. If you are in UAE, in Dubai, the Dubai time is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have students in Dubai and um, I think Riyadh and Kuwait. So we will have to follow the same schedule. It's a Monday to Friday schedule and it's a three-hour live session. So ibig sabihin, live na nagtuturo sa inyo yung instructor. And you will have additional couple of hours if you want to consult your instructor. Uh, madali ko usap yung instructors. Sometimes you can talk with them before classes or after classes or you can schedule another appointment with them. It's very easy. You can schedule your own self-directed learning because you will have assignments, homeworks, um, group work. So you'll have to allot some time for that as well. Now, what is the advantage of starting online? First, you will receive a certificate for the online part, and then you will receive a diploma when you complete the whole program, actually two diplomas. So you're receiving three qualifications. When you start online, you reduce your overseas living expenses by six months. It's an easier follow-up with um, the licensing. Because when you start online, we also start the licensing process with you. And that means uh, step one, which is NNAS application. So if there is a need to do follow-ups, especially with PRC or with your previous school, it's just easier to do that when you're in your home country. This is an advantage to your student visa application. Actually, a lot of our students who have received their visa approvals, they've been approved when they started online because it's seen as a genuine student. We will give you a discount. Okay? When you start online, we give you a discount of 6,500 Canadian dollars. That is a huge discount and it's done direct. So I'll show you the tuition fee later on so that you understand how much of a saving this is. The rest of the balance is actually very affordable too, and it's paid per installment. And when you start online, you don't need a student visa, okay? Your student visa is needed for the April 2022. So you can start online without a student visa. So what are the program outcomes here? You will definitely be an HCA. You have the option to be an LPN or you have the option to be an RN. So what is the entry requirement for this program? First, you have to be a BSN graduate. You have to be an RN. You have to have work experience. So minimum of two years full-time paid work in the past 10 years. Now, the work that we're looking for, um, it's not limited to hospital work. You can be a clinic nurse, dental nurse, um, school nurse, company nurse, private duty nurse, clinical instructor. As long as your certificate of employment clearly states that your role requires you to be a registered nurse. Okay? Or if they can put in registered nurse. That's the most important part there because we're working together with the licensing bodies, well, with NNAS, so they have to see that. Now, with the two years of work experience in the past 10 years, we're also looking for a minimum of about six to eight months, 900 hours within the past five years. So there has to be a recent work experience. So why are we very specific about this? Two years will allow you the enough points to enter Express NTB CPNP. And then the five years allows us uh, for you to be assessed by NNAS properly. So kung medyo ma mahirap i-process ito, what I would suggest that you do is you submit your resume to Roman and Associates team. When you submit your resume to them, they coordinate it with me and we can give you a free assessment we can tell you whether you qualify for the program or not. We're also looking for English proficiency. So if you have an academic or general IELTS, we will accept at 6.0 overall score, no band lower than 5.5. But good news to Filipino students, Filipino citizens only. We can waive your IELTS. 
However, when we waive your IELTS, you need to submit a medium of instruction in English certificate, which you can get from your previous school or your last school attended. But because this profession is regulated, ibig sabihin we're following um, the, the protocols uh, with the BC Care Aid registry. We have a registry, okay? So we need to still have an English proficiency test done when you arrive in Canada. And when you arrive in Canada, you have the option to take CLBPT, CELPIP, or General IELTS. And we will uh, facilitate that for you as well. Now, um, I'd like you to meet your future instructor for this program. Her name is Jackie Godaya. I'm just going to play this video for you as well um, because she has a very good message. After this, we'll talk about the tuition fees um, and we'll talk about the other option for those students who might not qualify for the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing. Please meet Jackie through this video. I became a nurse. It was very um, in demand and it was very popular in the Philippines. I was the second nurse in the family. The first one was my uncle who's a registered nurse in the United States. So that is why um, he influenced me well. He's an ICU nurse and so I said, hmm, I want to become an ICU nurse as well, just like him. I love being a nurse, especially when I started working in ICU. I remember this patient of mine who is um, unconscious for, I think, around two weeks, but he's kind of young. I was trained as a nurse that you have to speak to your patient no matter what, they are conscious or not. Explain everything that you are doing to them. After some time, I have to be off for, I think, three days. When I went back, he was already awake. And then when I entered his room, he told me, Hey, I recognize your voice. You are the only nurse who keeps talking to me and explaining, even though I am not answering back to you. And that made me feel so happy. That is something that money can buy. That is why I really want to become a nurse. So two years in ICU in the Philippines, and then two years in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and then around seven years in emergency in military hospital in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And then I have to go back to Philippines. I thought I'm going to settle there. And then I started working as an instructor in Makati Medical Center, College of Nursing. They placed me in intensive care and accident and emergency because that is my forte. And to be honest, most of my students, they became ICU nurses and ER nurses. And now they're telling me, thank you so much, Jackie, because if not for you, we will not appreciate this nursing profession at all. You have shared your, not just your experience, but your passion in caring, not just for patients, but even to students. And then I also became a nurse educator in Dubai for another five years in Rashid Trauma Center Hospital. I get to check all the competencies of the nurses, so I'm still like working in the hospital setting, on the go, helping them whenever they needed me, which area they're working in, except there is no citizenship in UAE. And so am I planning to be, to be working for them for the rest of my life without um, gaining citizenship at all? And that is why I decided um, to work in Canada. Where I'm working in Rashid Trauma Center, there are Canadian nurses who's working with me. Then I learned from them, well, Canada is really good. So then I said, why not give it a try? It is going to be good for my family, especially for my children. We landed here with zero, zero relatives, zero friends. Um, so we, we did struggle. And then that is why I said, whatever happens, I will become a registered nurse and I am going to give a very good future to my family. Well then, when I became a registered nurse here in Canada, um, a school offered me to teach because they have seen my experience and being an internationally educated nurse, they have seen that this will play an important role in the program that they are offering. With Stenderberg College, we will be assisting you, providing you all the assistance that you will need from first step until the end, passing the NCLEX RN. The people working in this uh, program, just like me, is an IEN myself. 
and can assist you, can help you, can understand your challenges because I myself as well has gone through the process. After completing the first few courses, you get to become a registered healthcare assistant. And of course, then you get to work. According to the law statistics, they are in so much need of registered nurses. You get to work not just in the hospital setting, you get to work in a community setting, you get to work in a facility, or maybe you want to become an educator just like me and then share your experience with IENs as well. So you have different opportunities, it's up to you. Whatever you can do today, do it now. Because that is how I made that decision. When I realized what Canada can give me and my family, I decided, yes, I want this. Remember, every single internationally educated nurse, you create your own future. With our assistance from Stenberg College, you get to make that dream come true. Don't just dream, work towards your dream and make it a reality. So that's Jackie Godaya for you. She's left us with a very good message to work on your dreams. Okay, so let us now uh, move forward to the next program. For those of you who think that you might not um, be eligible for the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing, we actually have the standalone version of the healthcare assistant diploma with co-op. So with this program, it's just one year and two and a half months. Um, and please excuse, it's not 48 weeks of paid co-op, but it's 26. So that's about six months of paid co-op. We have intakes um, March, July, and September for next year. This is a diploma program, and this is the standalone version. Delivery hours of the program would be 20 to 25 hours per week, the same with our postgraduate diploma. And you also have a co-op of 20 hours per week. So when you study this, you will also be receiving additional certificates, and these certificates are complementary to your profession. So just to clarify, when you become a care aide or a community healthcare worker, healthcare assistant, HCA, personal support worker, there's a lot of terms, right, uh, for them. In general, this program will teach you um, knowledge, and uh, skills on how to perform duties as a caregiver uh, uh, for um, aged care. But once you become a registered healthcare aide, you are not limited to just aged care. You can actually be uh, working in a hospital setting or in a community setting, or you can even work with children. As mentioned, the average salary for this profession is about $23 per hour. And we've been delivering um, our students to these co-op um, employers. Actually, there's more now uh, where we can place our students for their co-ops. The good thing about this program is it will accept you even if you do not have a non, if, even if you do not have a medical background. So our entry requirement here is year 12 equivalency. So that means if you are a K-12 graduate, you can enroll in this program. If you're a bachelor degree holder and it's a medical or non-medical, we will accept. Or if you are uh, from the old Philippine curriculum, you completed your high school and then you went to college, as long if even if you are an undergraduate, as long as you completed your second year of college, you will still be admitted to this um, program. Now for the English proficiency, it's the same with the postgraduate diploma, 6.0 overall score, no band lower than 5.5, a general or academic. And we also waive your IELTS for entry. So you can just submit a um, medium of instruction in English. But again, this is a regulated profession, means we need to report or to register you to the BC Care Aid the Registry. And that means that uh, you will still have to take an English proficiency test when you arrive in Canada. I'm not going to play this one video anymore. I have nothing but respect. 
let's talk about the immigration pathways. So I mentioned that we are a private institution. And a lot of you might be asking, um, do you have PGWP? Okay, the direct answer there is no, we do not have PGWP. However, we do not need it. Okay, so let me just remind everyone, a postgraduate work permit or a PGWP is um, will allow you to stay in Canada for work, but you have to find your own work sponsor for you to stay and it's a way for students to gain um, Canadian work experience, right? But with the programs that we're offering you, okay, we do not need for you to look for your employer anymore because we have our partner employers ready with an LMIA or long-term work sponsorship for you. So what happens to our students is that, one, they can get absorbed by the co-op employer, or if not, we redirect them to our other partners where they can get long-term work sponsorship, which they can accept, and then they, they can already apply for an immigration pathway or an LMIA. So our students for these programs are 100%. Um, they can get employed. It's really up to them whether they want to accept the offer or not. Overall, at Stanford College, we have 98% um, employment rate. If you're looking for the 2%, it's mostly coming from our business students. Business students, normally they further their studies. They don't go for employment immediately. But for RNs, LPNs, HCAs, they get their employment. And we also assist our students with that. Once you accept your work offer, you are eligible to enter these immigration pathways already. So there's no need for you to wait for another one year or two years just to qualify to the immigration pathways. You already qualify once you accept a work sponsorship. Here's the tuition fee. For the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing, as you can see, whether we deliver it face-to-face -face or online, it's the same tuition fee of 21300 approximately. Now, that's already for the two years. So imagine that's just around 11000 per year. Okay? Napakababa niya. Very affordable. Now, that already includes all of your student fees, finance fees, um, your equipment use, co-op fees, even your books are already included and the medical coverage for the first three months. The initial deposit fee for those who plan to do face-to-face -face only is 5150 Canadian dollars and it's deductible from the total. The rest of the balance is going to be paid per installment when you arrive in Canada. Now, as mentioned earlier, we have a discount promo for those who plan to start online. So if you're starting online, the initial deposit there is 8,100 and it will give you a direct discount of 6,500. Therefore, you can start your, your program with just 1,600 Canadian dollars or around 64,000 pesos. The rest of the balance, it's only paid when you arrive in Canada and it's paid per installment. For the healthcare assistant diploma, the Approximate tuition fee is fifteen thousand eight hundred, with the initial deposit of five thousand one fifty. Again, the initial deposit will always be deductible from the total, and the rest of the balance will always be paid per installment once you arrive in Canada. So I'm not going to discuss further on the admission process, but what you need to do is to submit your resume to. Uh, Roman and Associates team so that they can assess. They will be coordinating with me. And just for you to know the timelines, we're quite quick when it comes to providing you the documents. So the letter offer can take um, 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, depending on the day itself. Okay. Um, and depending whether you have already completed everything. And once you make your initial deposit payment, you should receive your enrollment documents um, within 24 to 48 hours as well. And your letter of acceptance is then sent to your agent. Just one last thing I'd like to cover. Because the, uh, we are an approved DLI, okay? So you can definitely travel. 
Um, but because your profession is in the medical industry, medical care, um, it has been mandated that you would need to have your vaccines. So if you are already vaccinated here um, in the Philippines, but it's not an approved vaccine, you will have the chance to be vaccinated when you arrive in Canada. And we can facilitate that. We're working with Fraser Health as well and we'll help you um, redirect you to where to go so that you can get your vaccines. The point here is that um, if you refuse being vaccinated, then you'd have to withdraw from the program because you cannot do a co-op unless you are vaccinated, okay? So just giving you a heads up that you need to be vaccinated. So there you have it. That is my turn. Thank you so much. If you can also follow our page, uh, Stanford College-Philippines, we also have the main page, Stanford College. That would be uh, really helpful for us, spread the word. And uh, we announce discounts, promos, anything on our Facebook page. You'll also see students with visa granted and even with their spouse, their children. So you'll see those success stories. So thank you very much. And back to you, Sir Israel. Thank you, Mom Jenica. That was, uh, once again, that is a very informative uh, session. So yeah, so I'm hoping that everyone did get a lot of things from you, which I'm pretty sure they did. And uh, now it's time to, for you guys to ask your questions. So yeah, so don't uh, hesitate to ask any of your questions in our chat box or in our Q&A. Okay. And Mom Jenica, if you can uh, make me a host again, that'll, that'll be great, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess it looks like uh, Mom Jenica, you did explain everything very well. Since I don't see any questions, or maybe the uh, panels, they're still thinking. Okay, there you go. There's one question How much is the cost of the apartment near Stenberg College? So I guess this would be around uh, Surrey. Ahead, yes. Jenica. Yes. So it really depends on what type of accommodation you want. An apartment would be, I'm thinking you're thinking your own room, your own kitchen, your own bathroom. So of course, a studio type apartment would cost more when instead of sharing with others, right? Um, most affordable would be hindi ka mismo nasa city. Um, pwede kang lumayo ng konti, medyo mag-travel ka. Um, it can cost you around, depending if you want to share, it would cost you around $350 to about $500 Canadian dollars per month. Pero if you want to be in the city center talaga, medyo um, gusto mo on your own, it can cost you around $800 to $1,000. It really depends. So um, I think if you have the money, you can go for that a thousand, one, two, ganyan. But if you don't and you want to save up, you can actually do shared accommodation with other students, or you can um, have like your own room, tapo shared kitchen, shared bathroom, kayo mga ganyan. Um, it would cost you less, around five hundred, six hundred dollars, ganyan. Thank you. And before you mute yourself, probably this one, if you have any experience on this one, are you partnered with those province in, that's included in the AIPP? Just for my personal answer on this one, I would rather stay in British Columbia than in AIPP because that, that Atlantic Immigration Provincial nominee, because in terms of, in terms of the environment, because I mean, like in Atlantic area, uh, uh, 
less yung tao. So, there'll be a big culture shock pagdating sa Atlantic area. So, I myself, I would just prefer to uh, stay in BC. And BC has its own uh, BC, uh, uh, BC PNP, which is the same as the AIPP. So, British Columbia uh, Provincial Nominee Program. So, but Ma'am Jenica, anything to add? Yeah, um, also, if you are registered to the BCCNM um, in the province, then there may be some, I, I'm just not sure exactly, if there will be additional steps that you need to take in order for you to uh, be eligible to practice in other provinces. Because the regulatory body of nurses for uh, for, for nurses, there you go. The uh, regulatory body for nurses is per province. So I know that it's also NCAS performing the exam for, for Atlantic, but I'm just not sure if there are additional steps you need to take in order for you to perform as a nurse in other provinces. So you just need to, I guess, take note of that. <coughs> may, mga, may mga variations um, when it comes to practicing in different provinces. But with that one as well, like uh, to add on to that one, it won't be uh, that difficult though to uh, transfer from one province to the yeah. other because our, let's say, from my experience, like BC nurses going to Ontario or to Manitoba, it's easy. It's kind of like a, it's the college to college talking to each other or the professional regulatory body talking to each other. And uh, so, yeah, so just getting your uh, information to your license and your employment history. And yeah, so it's not that hard. So, yeah. But I think as soon as you finish, as soon as you finish your post, your, your, your course in BC, you will fall in love with BC we're in I don't think you will go anywhere right because in terms of in terms of not unless you like snow then yes you can go ahead and go <laughs> elsewhere but if you're not fond of snow I mean I like for myself I would rather just have a snow overnight and then that's it not during the day because it's hard to have the snow you have to plow that one you have to shovel the snow and it's not that it's it's fun at first but if you do it every day, it's not fun. So yeah. So, <laughs> but, yeah, so and I sir, would... I just want to add to, uh, and sorry, this we prolonged this topic. It's just that I've talked to a lot of students, and a lot of them choose yung mga sobrang lib lib na lugar, right? Because it's cheaper. Pero in reality, it's your lifestyle. Eh? Whatever is your lifestyle here in the Philippines. And, and let's say you're surrounded with people and you suddenly uh, you're suddenly in a place where it, it, you don't have access or sobrang layo na mga stores sa kailangan mong puntahan it's a lifestyle so i think you need to carefully choose where you want to live because you're living there yung mga ac yung accessibility of things to you um people surrounding you you have to take um into consideration pag choose mo ng province yeah, that's that's a good point, Mom Jenica. So, and that's why, like, you might see in other province. Oh, why is it Alberta giving higher wage for nurses than in BC? There's a reason for that one. One reason is no one wants to work in Alberta, right? So that's why they need to attract more people. So, in order to, uh, yeah, it's yeah. There you go. So next question is, I'm an RN in the Philippines, perfect, but did not practice. What will be the program to take? Mom Jenica? Yes, so if you do not have any work experience, then I will recommend that you apply, uh, enroll in the HCA program instead because you don't qualify for the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing. So the HCA program, once you've completed that, you're, you're going to be a registered HCA. I recommend that you, um, you know, accept a work sponsorship under an HCA, go for your permanent residency, and then in the future, you still have access to becoming a nurse anyway. So it's just a longer process to practice or be um, a nurse. Pero yun yung magiging entry pathway mo just because you don't qualify for PGBCN. 
And I think the next question attached to that one is how about the uh, for the payment? Is it per semester? Per not semester, um, quarterly. Quarterly. Yeah. There you go. Thank you for your questions, JM. Any other questions? Let's see the Q and A. I don't see any thing in the Q and A. Oh, estimate per yep, quarter. There you go, estimate. Okay, the estimate per quarter, let me just, for the postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing, if you're doing it face-to-face -face only, ibig sabihin, wala tayong discount, um, per quarter would be around 3,667. If you go for the online, okay, um, and you plan to when you do the online, you have a discount. So the per quarter there would be around 2650 And then if you're planning to do the HCA, okay, nasa ganun din siya, 2600 something Ganyan, 2685 Kasi there will be a remaining 10800 So kayang-kaya niyo yan. Kaya-kaya niyo yung per quarter. And also, we're quite flexible. So, if you have a proposed payment plan that you think would work for both of us, you just talk to our finance team. nag adjust sila. Even with, you know, let's say, on the 15th yung, yung due date mo, you can make adjustments. Let's say, every 30th pa yung sweldo mo. So, you can make those adjustments and we allow that with our students. You just need to communicate it with us. And just to add on to that one, <clears throat> since we're talking about the year finance, so just uh, remember though that in your study permit, you're allowed to work 20 hours per week. So, uh, I mean, like uh, that would be a great help in terms of any... Uh, daily expense, monthly expense, or tuition fee, right? So, and in terms of your, your, uh, your wage as a working student, not, because, not just because you're a working student, your wage will be lower. No, it would still be at least the uh, minimum wage for British Columbia, right? So, uh, so that's one. Now, the other one is like, as I mentioned earlier, you'll have 11 months of paid co-op. Right, so if you guys remember how much the uh, <clears throat> the hourly wages for nurses, so you'll be receiving the same hourly wage. <clears throat> sorry, thirty five dollars and something. So that would be a great help for you guys, right? So before you even complete your course, you have already paid for it, right? And now you're earning more, right? So. Don't be, uh, I know it's, it's, it's a lot of money at first, but you will be earning it, right? And, and every time I talk to our clients when it comes to expenses, I do tell them that I treat that one as an investment, right? So you're investing it to, on yourself. And the good thing about this one is, unlike other business, in other business, you have to rely on other people, let's say, buying your stuff, buying your product, and hopefully they like it and hopefully they come back for it, right? With this one, the, 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 uh, you have control over when will you get your investment back and how quick, right? So if, as a student, if you're looking, if you're, if you're, want, if you're okay if like working 20 hours per week, right? And then as a co-op uh, student you're getting that uh, that $35 per hour then then you'll get your investment back even again even before you complete your course so i'm hoping yeah hoping that would kind of like uh, help you guys in terms of your future planning cuz again it's not a it's not cheap right it's yeah and can I ask okay that was good do you have an office here in the Philippines so Roman Associates yes we do have an office in the Philippines and that would be in Lipa City Batangas and that might be too far from you but it doesn't make sense to have office on every city in the Philippines or every country in the world right so that would be a lot of overhead that'll be 
then we have to charge our professional fee higher than what it is right now. So, but then that's having only a an office in Lipa and here doesn't, it's not a barrier for your success. We are able to manage that one uh, seamlessly. So yes, oh, <clears throat> most of our clients are not from Lipa City and that are here already in Canada. They're not from Lipa City. They're, they're from other cities in the Philippines and other countries as well. And they find it, they found it as a no, no problem at all. So how can I get more details in flexibility of payments? I think Mom Jenica did uh, mention about that one that uh, you just have to uh, go to the finance department on that one and just kind of like uh, say your thoughts, right? And yeah. uh, they'll be flexible. Yep. Can you help us find work while studying? I'll let Mom Jenica answer yeah. that one first. <laughs> yes, we do have the career services. You just need to let us know that you need help. And we actually do that uh, with, for our students. So yes, we'll help you. <clears throat> Perfect. And, and I mean, like if you want to do it yourself, I am yeah. optimistic that you guys will be able to find work. There's, it's finding work here is different from finding a job in the Philippines, right? Because the job in the Philippines, work in the Philippines, you'll see, let's say in a department store, hiring female, 18 to 25 years old, single, right? So all of those things, that one doesn't exist here, right? So they don't look at your gender, they don't look at your age, they don't look at your marital status, your religion, none of those things. As long as you're qualified for the job, then they'll hire, hire you. Right? So don't be, uh, yeah, uh, don't be afraid of kind of like, uh, will I be able to find a job? Yes, you will be able to find a job. As long as you're not picky, of course, right? Because you might be, of course, if you're looking for, oh, I want to be a manager of whatever, then that might be hard, right? So there you go. At first. But of course, later on, oh yeah. Is it safe to take, okay, can you have, okay. Is it safe to take a one-year program considering the immigration? I guess you are, JM, you're talking about the care aid course. Okay, so I can answer to this one and then Mom Jenica can add to this one, add more. So for the care aid course, there is a co-op that's part of the care aid course. Right. So even though Stanford College is a private school, as Mom Jenica did mention earlier, they don't need they don't need the uh, PGWB because during your co-op, you already place in your future employer. Right. And what will happen is that even before you complete your course, that future employer would already be hiring you. Hey. I want to hire you permanently. So now, even before you complete your course, you'll now apply for your work permit with that employer sponsoring you. So there won't be any gap from study permit to work permit. There won't be any gap at all. I'm just going to step out 30 seconds. I'll be back. Sure, no problem. Okay, so just to add to what Sir Israel um, said, is it safe to take the one-year program? It's a little over one year. And as long as your program is over eight months, um, maybe you're asking about for the student visa application, as long as it's over eight months, it should be okay. And we've had uh, visa grants for similar programs that are about a just a little over one year. So I don't see any problem with, you know, your student visa application. Um, there is another question. What is the possible part-time job in the hospital while studying in postgraduate course? Um, there are, yeah, I think Sir Israel would be able to answer that. Yeah, <clears throat> so if you guys can recall, like uh, the first course or the first module or subject that would be taken is the HCA course, right? 
So <clears throat> as soon as you're done with that HCA course, and this is a good thing about the EF program that Stanford offers. And again, they have done their research. That's why they're, and they're thinking of you guys. So once you're done your HCA course, you'll be registered with BC Carried Registry. So while you're doing your other courses, your before the co-op, you can now work as a healthcare aide, right? So healthcare aide or patient support worker or caregiver, you can work in a hospital setting, you can work in a facility, you can be in a private setting as well. So in a hospital setting, your wage on that one would be more than the uh, province uh, minimum wage. The average is $22, $23 an hour. So that is, uh, that's one of the things, uh, one of the jobs that you can, you guys can uh, take on while studying. And that's very common, right? I mean, like even, even the uh, local students here, uh, nursing, local, local, local nursing students here, they, that's their part-time job is the healthcare aid. Because in that way, you're already, uh, in, you're already in the healthcare field right so you're able to kind of like uh, work with patients while you're studying the rest of your pigeon and there's other part-time jobs as well if you want to serve coffee yes starbucks starbucks is around tim hortons is around so yeah so there's there's a lot to choose from but i would highly recommend the care aid course i mean like the care aid uh, work since uh, that'll be good for your pigeon Uh, <clears throat> I registered, I'm a registered nurse in Philippines. How to start? Great question, Donovi. So for everyone who wants, who are, who are very eager to start and would just like to say, shut up Israel, we want to start now. Yes, uh, just go ahead and submit your resume to assessment at romancis.ca. And we will go ahead and start, uh, there you go. And we'll go ahead and start your assessment right away. Okay. So again, it's uh, assessment at romancis.ca. That would be your next step. Let me just expand this one. Oops, sorry. Okay. Next, sorry. Next one is, hold on, just navigating screen right now. There you go, okay, hold on. Next question is, Okay, is the PG course the whole day and Monday to Tuesday, question mark, in face-to-face? -face? Okay. okay, so when you start the program uh, for the postgrad with Diploma in Canadian Nursing, when you're studying the HCA portion, okay, it will be Monday to Friday, but it will just be half day. Okay, just half day. And when you start the core postgraduate diploma, it will be uh, um, Monday to Wednesday or Wednesday to uh, Friday. So it depends on what cohort you fall under. So it'll just be three days uh, per week. <clears throat> Thank you. And the next question, is it paid co-op for the HCA? And the follow-up question on that one, does this count? towards your 20 hours per week. So the paid co-op is, yes, it is a, so yeah, your co-op for HCA is a paid one, right? So same, it will be, your wage would be the industry wage. So it depends on which, uh, where you're working though, if it's in a private uh, employer as a caregiver or in a hospital setting or in a facility, right? And, does this count towards your 20 hours per week? No, it doesn't. So you can have, uh, if you can, right, 40 hours a week on for your co-op and then 20 hours 
for your study permit. So that's 60 hours per week if you can, right? So, and what is the next step? Is it a one-to-one -one consultation to get more details? I mean, like, yeah, JM, if you need more, if you have more questions then definitely just go ahead and ask them away. I mean, like we can have a one-to-one uh, uh, -one session on that one, right? A consultation, that's fine. Or you can just message us with more of your, uh, any more questions and then we can just answer those or emails as well. So it depends on what you're uh, most comfortable with. And then if you're, if you're satisfied and you've got all the answers, then just go ahead and submit your resume to assessment at romancis.ca and we'll go from there. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, with Stenberg, we'll assess your resume and see if uh, you're qualified and then uh, go from there. Okay, any other questions from the group? Q&A, we don't have any questions in our Q&A, so yeah. Let's give it another, sorry, would you minding sending the email please? Of course, let me just uh, send it right here. Hold on, I'll just be typing it. So it's assessment at romancias.ca. There you go. <clears throat> you guys are awesome. Thank you. No, mom, Janica is awesome. So yes. So thank you, JM. So we'll give you guys another 30 seconds to think of your question. And and this is not this is not the uh, the last time, right? You can you guys if after this webinar live stream, you guys are all of a sudden you have a question, please do not hesitate to reach out. You guys can always go to our Facebook business page, Messenger, and ask away. We'll be happy to answer your questions. It would be uh, I do monitor those uh, those uh, questions as well. So if if uh, the staff is not able to answer it right they would refer that one to me so yeah so it will be we're looking at it so you might find an answer while you're sleeping because again time difference you're sleeping while i answer your question so there you go how can we qualify for the discount yes great question and this would be for the pigeon so the way to qualify for the discount is we need to you guys need to act quickly because this one we only have until when from Jenica next, next week I, I only have until September 15. Um, the discount is applicable to postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing JM so uh, you said that you do not have work experience so you don't oh. qualify for that so yeah so there you go sorry JM yeah so uh, yeah thanks for being on top of that one, Mom Jenica. So yeah, so, but then for the rest, right? For those uh, people who would be uh, looking at, looking at the, uh, taking the pigeon, take advantage of the $6,000 discount, right? But it's a uh, time is uh, running out. We only have until next week, but it's only, what's the day? It's only- Today's Friday, Friday the 10th. You still have some time. Yeah, yeah, you still have some time, right? So. The, the biggest the biggest thing is to submit your resume, right? So that's the next step. Submit your resume and then we'll go from there. We'll guide you. We will we will uh, bug you okay, in terms of your application and all of those things to meet the deadline, right? So there you go. <clears throat> is there a processing fee aside for the school fees? Yes, there is a professional or consultant's retainers fee on that one jam so we'll uh, we can talk about that one offline as well in our one-to-one -one session if you want or in emails we will email you all all of the uh, expense as well next question is hello sir 
newly BSN grad here, is HCA a face-to-face -face program? Sorry if I missed Mom Jenica explaining the course. No worries. So yeah, so the uh, HCA course is a face-to-face -face program. Right. So yeah, so if yeah, if you're a newly BSN grad with no experience yet, then yes, the way to go is the HCA course. And yes, it is a face-to-face. What should we include in the resume? Anything in particular or focus? How can I schedule a one-to-one -one session? Okay, so for the first one, the resume would be your basic information, right? We don't need, and we don't need your religion. We don't need your marital status. We don't need your age. We just need your name, your phone number, contact details, and then your educational background, and then your work experience background, right? And any trainings that you had, right? So there you go. I just want to add go to ahead. that, Israel, because um, I see a lot of resumes on a daily and uh, people forget the dates. I need you to put in the month and the year, okay? And if you're an undergraduate, you have to be very clear on that because a lot of people would just put in the, pro the course that they took, but if, you know, if they're an undergraduate, they don't specify, you have to specify those information on your academic background. So just don't forget dates. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks for the reminder, Mom Jenica. And then how can you schedule for one-to-one -one session? Just go ahead and message us on our Facebook page, on our business uh, message, on our, yeah, FB Messenger. And uh, we will, we can go ahead and uh, book that one, right? Or you can, uh, or the uh, the crew in the Philippines can also uh, kind of like uh, give the uh, do the one to one session with with you, so there won't be any time difference. There you go. Okay, I guess. All right, I guess that's it for now. Okay, Mom Jenica, any uh, last message? to our panels? Well, first, I'd just like to thank Roman and Associates again for inviting me over and for all the attendees who joined us this morning. Thank you so much for your time. And we are looking forward to having you in Canada and to start your Canadian life. So thank you. And same here, <clears throat> Mom Jenica. Thank you for, uh, for your presence and thank you for the information. And to all the attendees, Let's just check one more chat if this is okay. Thank you. Yeah, for all the attendees, participants, thank you so much for, <clears throat> for your time. I know you guys are very busy in your own lives. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much. I'm hoping that you guys learn a lot of things. And if you can also share the information that you got to your friends, to your family, that will be very much appreciated. And uh, I guess we can call it today. And stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye.